Bodog poll question today. Who's the Canucks' best defensive center? Horvat, Miller, Patterson, none of the above. Voting at Sakarison Price on Twitter. Bodog, sports odds, poker tips, and free casino games. It's time to play. Blake, I'm going to take a couple of really big swings on the NBA's Eastern Conference as they're on the eve of their season to be the winner in June and play for the title. The Cavaliers have done really nice work. They're plus 1,500, the sixth choice, and then the Raptors are the seventh choice at plus 2,000. So either of them to win the NBA's East on your Bodog line of the day. Here he is, one half of the Bob McCowan podcast and the former executive producer of Hockey Night in Canada. It's been a couple of weeks since we've talked to John Shen. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, boys. How are you? You're very well. Very well. Marvelous. Uh, love that uh, hockey is upon us. What a great time to be a sports fan. So much going on. Uh, except, and we'll cover this first, John, before we get into other matters, but the end, uh, the NHL went dark yesterday on the first Sunday. <laughs> Of the regular yeah. season. I saw you tweeting about it, and as a former TV exec, is it just you don't want do to blame? Who do we with blame? the NFL, or is there more to it than that? <laughs> no, no. no. I actually, I, it was funny to, to uh, read the reaction uh, to, to the tweet because I was in shock. Uh, you, you know, you don't give up Sundays in any sport. Uh, you, you may on Grey Cup Sunday. You may on Super Bowl Sunday. But you do not give up weekends, period. And quite frankly, it was uh, uh, just a coincidence. Uh, they had they had enough games on Friday. Uh, they had almost everybody involved on Saturday, uh, and, and they have a full slate tonight. And so there was no way to jam another set of games in. And and and, and the frustration was there was lots of twos and threes, and and you, you can't have three and four, but. Uh, you know, there was a lot of games that you could have spread something out, but it was just, it, in the end, Matt, it was just a fluke on behalf of the NHL. Wow. They they surely tried to avoid it, uh, but they couldn't. Yeah, I was going to say, not to belabor, but like that seems like a miss. Like as Sundays, you know, gives Ooh. families a better chance of going to games. Like that seems like a miss not to have some well, especially markets. Especially your first Sunday. Yeah. This is yeah. your first Sunday. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you know, there are so many TV contracts in place. You know, you you have to yeah. make sure that Rogers mm-hmm. gets looked after. Remember, hometown hockey got moved from Sunday to Monday, so that right. changed something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have ESPN and TNT. You have to look after on on certain days of the week. They actually have a contract in Europe, uh, a major. They've done a major growth spurt in Europe uh, that calls for a prime time game Saturday and Sunday. So this was a big miss for the NHL. In at least having one game on on Sunday afternoon, for the sake of argument, is this the only dark day this year outside of uh, around the All Star game? I looked at future Sundays and saw games, but I didn't run through yeah. all the way to, to ne- April. Neither did know? I. Uh, n- okay. Neither did I from from that perspective. You know, and and it, it, the frustration for me is uh, even when I was at the league, Matt, I was a huge advocate for having no games on trade deadline day. Like, I don't want games right. on trade deadline day because I want players to be able to travel and, and be ready for their next games. And I don't and, and I don't want games on Monday of Hall of Fame night. Like, I like Monday That's Hall of Fame night. That's a great night to be a celebration of the game. Um, but mm-hmm. it, it's just not feasible at times. And that's why yesterday when I, I, I sent that note out, it was, to me it was shocking. I thought my computer was broken because I when I yeah. clicked on and there were no mm-hmm. games – I said, "There's what's wrong with the website? What's wrong?" Yeah. And, and it wasn't that case. Hundred percent with you, John, with regards to that Hall of Fame Monday, because you know the, the the possibilities. It's not like the Hall of Fame checks with the schedule maker, right, before conducting the vote. Well, there's the possibilities listen. of having you know great franchise icons being honored there in Toronto at the Hall, where their team could be in Anaheim playing a game. Uh, you know, and you want to be able to celebrate. Uh, the Hall of Famers, Indeed. is my view I, at least. And I tell you what, I, I I haven't checked that night yet, but I certainly hope the Canucks aren't playing when Daniel and Henrik. Yeah, are going in, no, you're so. absolutely right. You're absolutely <laughs> There's right. There's a Friday coming up in November, by the way, where the Canucks are the only game. Uh, they will have all eyes of the hockey world on on the Vancouver Canucks. So uh, the question is, John Shannon, what will that Canuck team in mid-November be like, and who will their head coach be? And no, no, we are not calling for the heads of Bruce Boudreau. But with an 0-2 uh, record that has happened the way that it's happened, 
And it has people asking, at least quietly, John, like, exactly how long is the leash? Not because they're praying for Boudreaux to go, unlike previous head coaches gone by. I think people are just curious. Like, can he withstand an 0-4 start, an 0-5? Like, oh, you know, exactly what does this leash look like for Bruce Boudreaux? I think we're a long way from worrying about that. The, the, you know, if you look at if you look at this team, um, this team is a victim of its inferior special teams right now. Bad what, one power play goal in two games. What is it? One for thirteen, I think. Uh, letting two shorthanded goals up. That's you can't do that in this league anymore. So you, you know, you fix the special teams, you fix the Canucks. They're actually, I, I, I think at times. Um, you know, in the in the Edmonton game, I thought you know they were a better team for two periods, and I thought yesterday in the, or Saturday in Philadelphia, uh, you know they they you know the, the ebbs and spurts. They played poorly in the first period and were up two nothing. You know, and I w- I was talking to my friends in Philadelphia, and they were lamenting how bad the Flyers are. <laughs> I mean, yes, <laughs> yeah. And, but John Tortorella, he's a magician, so. <laughs> But but isn't a lot of what you just talked about coaching again? And this yeah, is not sure there's, there's no groundswell. There's no groundswell of movement to get rid of Bruce Boudreaux. I think people are more worried. Is he going to have the leash to outrun a bad start? Well, I, you know, I mean, this is what happens when you know contracts linger, right? This is what happens. This is the storyline that occurs, uh, particularly in a hockey frenzy market like Vancouver, when Bruce doesn't get an extension, and we went through what we did last May and June. When that deadline became so public, of uh, the June first, he's got to decide by scenario. So I, you know, the other thing is, is and I was thinking about this. What an awful road trip to start the season. Yeah, what not an great. Awful road trip when you think about Edmonton, Philadelphia, Washington, Columbus, Minnesota. I think is that, that that's it. So I mean, that's, yep, that's it. Ugh. My goodness Second gracious, in a row, John. Second year in a row, it was a six gamer last year through some of the um, similar well, covering a lot of ground. Off, yeah, <laughs> Buffalo to try and work its and, way and back see, west. Yeah. And, and what would have happened? See, the the problem is, is that the Patrick Alvine and his group would not have been involved in the early parts of putting this schedule together. So their their influence on the schedule would be next year's schedule. You know, whoever right. whoever Patrick or Jim had designated as okay, you're our schedule person. Whether that's uh, Emily or or Cammy or or Ryan, uh, you know, they're the ones that are going to deal with the schedule makers at the league. Um, and they when they give their fifty dates up, uh, they're the ones that are going to say we can't start on the road again like this year. Uh, and that's the problem when you do when you have a transition from of management teams, things get lost. Because that would have been the previous management group's uh, job to to put in the dates and then start the schedule this way. I know you caught JT Miller's comments. What did you make of them? God bless him. I mean, holy mm-hmm. smokes! Um, we all—I always thought he was a shoot from the hip guy, but when he uh, admits to himself that uh, he's been on for all eight goals uh, and w- will not—he he, he said he wouldn't discuss his teammates he kind of did in a backhanded way but that's okay I, I it just to me the fact that he was the one who called himself out uh is is so good is such a revelation for professional sports where they all get into sports speak uh i i thought it was i thought it was a brilliant move and it it, it took a ton of pressure off of bruce yeah, who, uh, well, it takes pressure off him what? too. It takes pressure off everybody. Yeah, it yes. does. Uh, yeah. outside yeah. of himself, people appreciate honesty. People, yeah. people appreciate yeah. accountability. So when he yeah. says that, he actually helps himself. He helps his community. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, yeah. and, but and you guys, but and you guys saw that through the whole COVID issue. Remember, remember when when the Canucks got dealt that terrible schedule a couple of years back, and it was J T mm-hmm. Miller that spoke up and said, "Hey, this schedule yep. sucks. We got to fix this." And the and the league went back and mm-hmm. said, "Yeah, we got to fix it. You're right." So from that perspective, mm-hmm. I, I, I give him full marks. Now, he better be better tonight. He better play yeah. better tonight because he's an $8 million guy now. Come on. Yeah. Uh, or at least will be soon. And uh, he's also your wartime general for sure. <laughs> for the Vancouver so is George Patton, and look what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Have you taken a look at this defense that they're playing with the entries, John? <laughs> like, we're a few games oh. into the season. Dreger told us last week, he's like, you know, if this keeps up, they may just have to make a trade for a defenseman. How do you size up this blue line here? Well, I'll be honest. When I looked at the roster on Wednesday, I was shocked. I went, who? I mean, uh, there there were some there were some names on there that I knew were were Canuck property, but I I didn't think that they were at this stage. Now, the My the Myers injury. Listen, the Myers injury, the Myers situation, the Meyer cap problem. It's not you know it's it's on hold for now. That's all it is. Um, I I, I do find it interesting that Noel Juleson will play rather than have Rathbone play in in. Uh, in in Washington, um, but at the same time, this is, you know, this was this was the this was supposed to be the Achilles heel of this team. Um, I didn't expect it to be the Achilles heel this early, uh, but yeah. uh, you know, it, it appears to be a, a reality right now. I, I think that there's real hope that Pullman will be okay and perhaps even play on other games on this trip. So, from that perspective, uh, things will things might help, but it's certainly the uh, when you look at the strength of this team up front, mm-hmm. boy, that's a lot of pressure on on Oliver Ekman, Larson, and and Quinn Hughes. Yeah, I, I guess the one saving grace could be the saving grace for the Vancouver Canucks is you have so many teams right off the start of this year that are seemingly already uh, playing for next year and playing for a, a Connor Bedard uh, lottery ticket that maybe some defensemen come available a little earlier uh, than in most than in most seasons, but we shall see. Well, I, I, the one uh, thing I, I, I just, I just, you know, I, I think that what we're going to see is we're going to see more of the, in in the near future, we're going to see more Dickinson trades. We're going to see more trades yeah. where teams, there are still teams once they get healthier that are well over the cap, well over the cap. I mean, look at the Maple Leafs. Yep. The Maple Leafs have their number one, arguably their number one goalie injured, and it actually helps them. Because they can play some Sonoff, yeah. who's a better goalie anyway, in my opinion, and then they can bring up another forward to help score goals. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, I mean, this that's, it's a reality of the cap, but it also, it's the, the ludicrous nature of what we're going through right now with a flat cap. Well, Ferraro was talking to do, uh, talking to us about this on Friday, saying he really wished there Does he was still work? Like a. T- I thought he retired. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry. Sorry. He works south of the border and he works here in Vancouver. Um, But he was saying that he still wished there was like an AHL taxi squad, uh, that there was some sort of mechanism that could prevent teams from playing short. And, you know, I I somewhat disagree. I'm like, well, uh, you know, if you want to play a skater short, that's only going to hurt you. I do think you have to should uh, have to meet a minimum (laughs) standard. But do do you think it would reflect poorly on the league if you continue to have teams that are going to you know, play a skater short because of cap purposes, not because of, you know, injury or a guy gets sick at the last minute? By the way, you sound like the commissioner. That's the commissioner. Hey, (laughs) hey, listen, don't then don't sign them. Then just don't sign them. You know, this is this is what this is what was envisioned with a hard cap. What wasn't envisioned was that it was going to be there was going to be very little or no growth over a three or four year period. Do you remember before the pandemic? I think we probably, as the three of us, talked one day, depending on what station you were on, that we were going to be close to a hundred million by now. Mm-hmm. We were going to be, we, you know, the growth of the game was pointed in that direction. And managers were salivating. Well, you know what? Life happens, and then they've been they they've been dealt this blow, and now they have to deal with it. I've seen a lot of criticism lately on the lack of growth of the top end player because the top end player in the other major North American sports, as you know, John, has gone shit. And I don't think anybody should be cheering this on necessarily, but you know they're making thirty thirty five million dollars a year, and. You know, the NHL top players have been stagnant. There really hasn't been a ton of movement off their yearly salary um, for 10, 15 years. Well, in fact, I would uh, I would argue in many ways there's been a regression. You know, in the 90s, there were guys making 12, 30. But Paul Correa, Paul Correa, I think, went five years in a row making more than $10 million before the cap. Uh, yeah. I mean, there were lots of players, you know, Yammer Yager, I think one year in Washington made 14. 
Uh, yeah, so adjusted you know, for inflation, you're right. That's more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yep. and so, but this was cost controls. Cost controls were part of what was negotiated by by both sides in order to make sure that the the, the league was, I, I think, as, as strong as it is. Um, you know, but we're, 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 we're now going to be dealing with other issues when it comes to how big escrow gets. Yeah. I know that's a boring topic. How big escrow gets in the well, last it, three or four <laughs> years of, right? It's a boring, it's a boring, it's a boring topic, but it may be the uh, first topic atop the mind uh, of players uh, when you talk to them. And uh, no question. yeah, uh, we're going to have to suffer through this uh, for at least uh, another year or so. How about Florida? They're playing with a roster of 20 gentlemen and are at the cap, do not have a single dollar available to them. So yeah. they're already playing with the minimum number uh, and may may lose bodies from here, depending on their cap predicament. Uh, John, marvelous stuff. Thank you for this, my friend. Happy hockey season. We'll catch up next Monday. Happy Monday, boys.